the administration. I see Casey going out. Got a bum cue. He did it. He did it. You know, this is what I get for listening to a former student. Check one. Check one, two. Hello, Audi. Seniors, let's begin with our senior cheer team members. Greeting her at midcourt will be the president of St. Edward High School, Mr. Casey McKenna, and the varsity cheer team coach, Ms. Gretchen Toddy. So please welcome Ellie Yanko. Ellie tonight joined by Lauren Yanko as well as her siblings, Jacob, Izzy, Annie, and Luna. And now once again, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you turn your attention to center court to recognize the members of the 2023 senior basketball class. One more cheerleader. Who? Excuse me, there is one more cheerleader, Julia Schletzley from Avon Lake, joined tonight by Megan. I didn't even see that. to move to the basketball team in alphabetical order, Brevin Coleman. Joined tonight by Angel DeChan Coleman and Brian Coleman. Next will be Cameron Grant, joined by his parents, Chris and Kelly Grant. Next, please welcome Ryan Hargett, joined tonight by his parents, Kristen and Jeff.
Next will be Kevin Trey Jackson III, joined by Kevin Jackson Jr. and his brothers Micah and Talon Jackson. Next is Brendan O'Malley, joined tonight by his parents, Dan and Judy. tonight by his parents, Megan and Patrick. Pfeiffer, joined by his parents, Nicole Pfeiffer, Parker, and Marty Lentz. Joined by his parents, Aaron and Stephanie. And Quincy Shields, joined tonight by Shardre Kenny. <laughs> and a lot of other people. and the graduating members of the 2023 Basketball and Cheer Squad.
From the Eagles' nest, it is senior night here as the Eagles of St. Edward High School get ready to take on the Hornets of John Hay. Hi again, everybody. I'm Adam Mendoza. Glad to have you along here on the Eagles Sports Network. St. Ed's coming off a big win last uh, Tuesday night against Solon in a 60-34 win. And tonight they have John Hay on a special night, senior night here, Donnie. Uh, Donnie O'Toole, the coach, joining me here tonight. And uh, it's good to have you back. Oh, it's always a pleasure to be here. You look at this game, Donnie. Uh, real interesting. Coach Flannery on senior night. A little different looks, but um, everything, you know, it's, it's the big thing is to try to get victory. Yeah, try and get a victory. Let some of the seniors get a lot of minutes. You know, this, um, you know they've earned it. You know, they've been part of the uh, program for four years and uh, how quickly it's coming to an end. Um, you know, during the regular season. So Eric, uh, Coach Flan really loves to get his seniors involved, kind of lets them run the, run the show for a while. Uh, but it's important we do get a W tonight. Um, you know, good win against Solon. I watched it online. Um, and we need to keep up that intensity tonight. Well, the Eagles uh, coming in at 16-1, and one, looking to go to 17-1 and one as this is the uh, third last game of the year. After tonight, they've got Brexville on Tuesday night, and then they have Richmond Heights on Friday night. We had an opportunity to talk with Coach Flannery to get his thoughts about today's game. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. Take two, Coach. Welcome back to the pregame show. Adam Mendoza along with St. Edward head coach Eric Flannery. Coach, we're in our second game of the week, but tonight is a special one. It is senior night. Yeah, again, uh, senior night is it's always a special night. Obviously, we're honoring uh, some guys that have spent four years here that have, have, you know, waited their turn to get a lot of minutes to play, to really contribute. 
and uh, they've, they've proven themselves worthy all season by the way they've performed. And tonight, hopefully, is, is just a good night to, to celebrate them, to celebrate their achievements, their success, uh, and really what fine young men they are. And it's been a, prev a privilege for me to, to have coached them, and, and it's, uh, it's going to be sad to see these guys go. The great news about tonight is that we still have a few more games left, no matter what. Um, so it's not the, the final goodbye. Um, but it, hopefully it's just a special night that we can honor these guys. And, and as I tell them always, hopefully we can celebrate with the win. And I know it's not just the guys that are on the floor, but there's one, to me, a real special senior that is on that bench, your team manager. Yeah, Brennan O'Malley is uh, special, <laughs> you know, in a lot of ways. I mean, he, he, he kind of makes a show of being a manager, which to me is... Um, special in its own right because he's taking a job that a lot of people may not like or want or do and he's made it fun and he and he works his, his tail off I, I don't ever want to say anybody's the best manager because I'll get a call from 40 other guys that um, but he's right up there I mean from the 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 way he runs out and swipes the floor and um, the way he rips off jerseys and uniforms during the game, the way he just gets our water bottle. I mean, he's at every practice, he runs our clock, he, he, he does everything. And he is a, somebody that for the last two years has done it with the basketball program. I know he's done it with the football program. Um, so I'm glad that you mentioned him. I, I'm sure I would have, but also he's my nephew. So just to have you know another relative come through here, St. Ed's represent the school well, make the most of his situation in a positive way. I think he has set the standard for a lot of other managers coming down the line and uh, just a great young man that uh, you know we'll be so sorry to miss uh, after this year. And another thing that I've noticed over the last two years, it doesn't matter if it's a St. Edward player down or the opposition player down, he'll go and get them water or do whatever for both teams. He is as um, selfless as a man can be. Like he, he's not, I, I think some people might think he likes the attention, which I'm sure he does, but he does it with a pure heart. And he, you know, he runs over and he's, he's helping the guys on our team. I know they love him, uh, but like to your point, it doesn't matter who that person is. It doesn't matter if they're the best player or nobody is sitting on the bench. Uh, he's gonna take care of you. And uh, a great shout out to Brendan for the tremendous uh, you know, stuff that he's done as our manager. Kind of what St. Ed's epitomizes. No question. As we look at this game tonight, coming off that win against Solon, uh, you, you come back with a win against Solon, you're coming up again against John Hay. The, the lineup will be a little bit different tonight because it is senior night. We'll see a lot of the seniors getting some playing time. Just how do you go about going into this game as we are down to the final three games of the season? Yeah, I mean, you know, the tradition that we've had with our senior night isn't going to change tonight. We're going to start all seniors. We're going to start mostly the seniors that haven't ever started or played much, and they'll get their opportunity tonight to play. As I always tell them, how long they play, it determines on their playing level. So when you get this opportunity, try to make the most of it. And as a goal tonight, even though it is senior night, goal number one is to win. Make sure we take care of business. Make sure we do what we're supposed to be doing. The second goal tonight is to celebrate and enjoy our seniors and to make sure that you know, if we can get them all to score, if we can get them all just some significant playing time, if we can do any of that stuff, we will we will do that throughout the course of the game. But don't do anything that embarrasses the program, yourselves. You know, play the game. And and John Hay obviously has had a rough year this year, but we're not taking you know anything for granted. Uh, our objective is to never embarrass the other team or opponent. We got to respect them and what they do. So keeping all of that in mind, I told the assistant coaches to make sure that they're focused on the game plan because I'm going to have a lot of other plans in my head just to make sure that we're honoring these seniors. And I've known over the last couple of years that there have been times that that group of seniors, even though they may not be starting, really does a great job in that first quarter. Yeah, I mean, it's again, you're, we're, we're going to start guys that can play. You know, we're starting, you know, the only Trey Jackson tonight who's been out most of the year with a hip injury is going to try to give it a go. Uh, he's not 100%, but we're going to play him just a few minutes. He wanted to make, you know, he, he wanted to enjoy senior night and get an opportunity. So, so he's going to be thrown in the mix. But guys like Quincy Shields, who haven't played a lot during the year, who's just a special young man uh, and a great teammate, and Grady Lenz Pfeiffer, you know, with football. But you're talking about wonderful teammates. And Ryan Hargett, who had a lot of minutes early in the season, he's, you know, it's been going because of Max McClellan's play. 
uh, but he's been nothing but a great supporter and tremendous teammate. So the guys that are starting tonight are guys that maybe haven't played a ton, but they're guys that can play, and they're guys that are great teammates, so it's easy for everybody to root for them. And when you look at this season, I mean, that that's the epitome of the season, great teammates. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people didn't expect us to have a as good a year maybe as we're, we're having, but we can point directly at this entire team, but the senior group specifically. We have guys that are great teammates, great leaders, and unselfish. And it shows in the way we play. It shows on how hard they play. And when you can put that combination together with some ability, you're going to win a lot of games, and that's kind of where we're at. And it's those guys that they may be at the back end of the bench, but on the practice floor, they're giving it their all to make the first and second teamers work their tails off. I mean, you've seen us practice. Nobody sits. Nobody's, you know, taking plays off. Everybody gets a equal opportunity in practice to prove what they can do, and their job is to make each other better, and these guys continue to do that. So hopefully they get some time tonight. Hopefully they get a little run. Hopefully we have some fun, some smiles on their faces. I told them that's up to them. You know, if Coach Land gets a little upset, uh, this could turn a, a fun night into a, a long night, so let's not make that happen. Coach, as we get set for tonight's game, let's take a look at this special starting lineup. Well, let's hope I get it correct. Starting at the point will be senior Lucas Perusing. Starting at the two will be senior Trey Jackson. Starting at the three will be senior Grady Lenz Pfeiffer. Starting at the four will be senior Quincy Shields. And starting at the five would be senior Ryan Hargett. Coach, good luck in tonight's game. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you, madam. Introducing the starting five for the Hornets of John Hay. Number zero, Teron Walker. Number two, Dante Padgett. Number four, Charles Hall. Number 23, Demetrius West. And number 44, Kishon Palmore. Head coach, Christopher Sander and the rest of the Hornets. Starting lineup for the 2023 Big Green Machine, the Eagles of St. Edward. At the point, a 6'1 senior, 35. number one, Lucas Perusek. 35 is, yeah, he came up. At guard, a 6'2 senior, number two, Quincy Shield. At guard, a 6'2 senior, number four, Grady Lentz Pfeiffer. At forward, a 6'6", senior number 20, Ryan Hargett. And at forward, a 6'2", senior number 15, Trey Jackson. Head coach Eric Flannery and the rest of the Eagles. Well, thank you very much, Tom Glasnap, our PA announcer here at the Eagles Nest. As we get said, it is going to be a different starting lineup, Donnie, as we've got Perusic, Shields, Pfeiffer, Jackson, and Hargett. Jackson going to try to make the most of it. He has been dealing with a hip injury, and uh, uh, he'll be he'll be needed 
and he'll try to go as much as he can today. Absol absolutely, and he's going to give forth his best effort, and those hip injuries can be lagging definitely. You know, it, 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 they hurt. You know, they, they, they don't heal easily, but he's going to give it a go because he's a competitor. Quincy Shields will jump up against uh, Kayshawn Palmore at six foot four. All name team. Kayshawn, what is it? Uh, Kayshawn Palmore. Love it. Eagles in their home whites. John Hay in their road green and gold. So a lot of green and gold tonight, Donnie. A lot of Donnie. green and gold. We're underway here senior night as Grady Lenz Piper won a state championship with the Eagles football team. Going back door, kicking it back out. Hargett, three, no, rebound. It was off by Trey Jackson, but Charles Hall comes up with a basketball and he'll get it off to Tavian Walker. Flan loves running one of those special plays right off the beginning. Oh, and that would have been really fun with oh, the yeah. uh, backdoor slam on the alley-oop. Yep. John Hay coming here with three teams, the freshman and the JV. Both teams for St. Ed's did win those games. On the drive, there's the basket up by Tavion Walker, and that's one of the few times that the Eagles don't take the lead early on in the game. Brady Lenz Piper with a basketball. He's on that left wing, looking to go on the pass to the right side to Hart, or to Perusik, back over to Quincy Shields. Underneath, Trey Jackson, three on the corner, yes! Oh, that's a big oh. basket for the injured yeah. Trey Jackson. That had to feel great for him. He does not look like he has not played a whole lot this year. Now, uh, John Hay coming out and trying to get that shot going. That is a huge shot for Trey Jackson. Yeah, now, the, now the, the pressure's off. Now he can relax and settle into this. And have some fun. Right, exactly. So it'll be uh, Charles Hall inbounding the basketball as the Hornets with it. On that wing, Jackson, they're out. There's a steal by Perusik. He's going to race to the left, and he slams that one home. Perusik with two. He averages 8.6. And the Eagles lead it 5-2. to two. And after the missed shot, Hargett comes up with the rebound. Down to Jackson. Ball bounced around. And it'll be John Hay basketball. Hargett averaging 2.1 rebounds a game. Perusik averaging 8. Quincy Shields averaging just under 2, as well as Grady Lenz Pfeiffer. Ryan Hargett averaging just under 3 points a game. In the backcourt, and Quincy Shields will get in the book for his first foul of the game. Well, he got it out of the way. Now he can really <laughs> get that foul out of the get way. Get that and foul out of the way. Now you can settle in. Inbounding the ball for, jo uh, for John Hay is Charles Hall. John Hay located downtown just in the university circle area. Great building over there in that heart of University Circle. Trying to get it to the big man, Palmore. He'll lay it off. Daggett going in, missing. Tapped up loose, picked up by the Hornets. Looking to get some help was Demetrius West, and the ball gets turned over to the St. Edward Eagles. 5-2 our score early on. And John Hay playing, looks like a matchup 2-3. Is that how you would see it? Yes. With the big man in the middle. Taking up a lot of space. That's Palmore. He's taking up a lot of space in a, that key. He is a big young man. At six foot four. As Shields gives it back to... Oh, yeah! Trey Jackson with six points. Both coming from the three-point line. He's feeling it. Eagles up 8-2. Ball. Smart move there by Tavon Walker throwing the ball off an eagle. He averages 9.6 points a game for the Hornets. Daggett with it. Nice move, floating. In and out, no good. The big man, Palmore has it. Couldn't get it to fall. Shields coming up with a rebound off to Perusik. He'll run it up the floor with a little bit of pressure through the center circle right side. Grady Lenz, Pfeiffer. Get in there. Oh, off the front of the rim. Just needed about a half inch more, and that would have drained the macrame. 8-2, St. Ed's with the lead. 4.55 to go here, opening quarter. Oh, big move there by Daggett. He'll throw it up. Oh, no, it doesn't go. He'll get the rebound off the loose ball. He'll get a second attempt that doesn't go. Hargett comes up with the rebound. Off to GLP. 
He'll move it down over to Lucas Perusik. Back over to Pfeiffer on that left side. Out to Hargett. Ooh. Oh, they want to take that top three. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Three in a row for Trey Jackson. There it is. Trey for Trey. Look at the team coming out to jump on him. <laughs> Nine first quarter points for Trey Jackson, the senior, on senior night. He is in the zone. He is in the zone. Good for him. Feed him the rock, baby. Yeah, ride it all night long. 4.26 to go. The Eagles out to an 11-2 lead. And Trey Jackson in his first start of the season with nine first quarter points. Three for three from long distance. You know, there's an old commercial. If it's Tuesday, I've got to call my mother on the long distance. But it's Thursday, so he's just dialing long he's distance. He's dialing long distance. He is dialed in good form, good his feet are set. He's comfortable. I mean, just he couldn't be in a more of a zone right now. And that's going to make Coach Flannery, it's, it's going to make it hard for him to take him out if he's still dropping those dimes. <laughs> I mean, it's year after year there's a senior that just steps up on senior night. DeAnthony Moore coming into the ball game as they work it way out on site. Pfeiffer on Daggett going in. Nice move there by Donta Daggett, who averages 12 points a game, and it's an 11-4 lead for the Eagles. Eagles working the perimeter. Shields into the big man. There was a bounce out. Coming up with it is Walker. He'll drive the lane, and he gets the basket. He's got four. 11 to 6 our score. Quickly down to Hargett for Great his look. first two. Great look. 13-6, Shane Eds. Hargett running the floor real well. Oh, another big shot there by Donta Daggett. He has again. four. Oh, Trey. Nope, not that time. You can't make them all. You know, in baseball, you fail seven times, you're going to go to the Hall of Fame with Absolutely. the 300 average. Absolutely. John Hay with a basketball as they work it to Walker. His shot goes off back of the rim. Shields comes up with the rebound. He'll lay it off to Lucas Perusik. Grady, Lenz, Pfeiffer with the three. Awesome. 16 to eight, St. Ed's. Grady picking up the three. Came into this game shooting 20% from beyond the arc. He'll get the basketball again. He'll throw it up again. Mm. He would have got a C, senor, yeah. if he would have <laughs> hit that one. Oh, and there is a Lucas Perusik block. Grady coming up with a steal. He'll run it up the floor on the left side. Off to Lucic. I'm in the middle. There's Hargett from triple try. No. Oh, nice outlet down there. Over to DeAnthony Moore. Oh, 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 my, my, my. He said get that weak stuff out of here. The stage blocked that from going on to uh, the, back, uh, the back football field. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. As my mom would say in Spanish, ay Dios mío. Oh, oh my goodness. Goodness gracious. He just, I mean, it just continues to amaze. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, without question, wow. Got some subs. That one bounces around. Eagles leading at 16 to eight. Shields off to Danny Lavelle. Lavelle zip pass over to Brevin Coleman. Here comes Cam Grant on senior night. Just picking up where the first group left off. 19 to eight, the Eagles are hitting the threes like it's going out of style. Hornets trying to get back in as they're down by 11. Nice move there. And the basket by Daggett. He picks up his sixth point of the game. 19-10 our score. Cam Grant 
They work it to Lavella. Oh, what a nice give and go. Cam Grant picking up point number five. He averages 10 a game. 21-10, St. Ed's. Little three, that one off the side of the rim. Shields comes up with the rebound, off to Cam Grant. He goes now, slow it up and move it up the floor with 1.02 to go. What a first quarter. Yeah. Trey Jackson with nine points. Lucas Perusik with two get out of here blocks. Absolutely get out of here. Cross court pass, Cam Grant trying to set up the offense. Quincy Shields underneath trying to work that low block. He'll get it in on the low block against the double team. Ball knocked out of his hands. Daggett with it. Working it to the right side of Potter. Back over to Moore. Potter. Nope. Rebound Cam Grant. Grant on the year. Averaging 6.7 rebounds a contest. There's the cut to Grady Lenz Pfeiffer. And GLP comes up with his fifth point of the night. He's turning it up. He's getting hot, Adam. There's a drive. That one's missed by Daggett. His shot again. Hard off the front of the iron. He has eight. And that is it for the first quarter of play. What an entertaining first quarter. Absolutely. St. Ed's leading it 23 to 12. No one still turned up the horn. Did you hear the horn at all? Barely. Barely. <laughs> Either I'm going deaf or. No, it's crazy. No, it's, it's really quiet. All yeah. right. You know, we got to take a break. Yep. Because we've got some notices to play. And we'll take this break on the Eagle Sports Network. At Joyce Buick GMC, we're receiving truckloads of new vehicles. Check out our great selection of new and certified used cars and trucks. For over 50 years, people have come from near and far for the best sales and service experience. See us today for the lowest prices and great selection in stock. And that's why people say, Drive Joyce, your friends and neighbors, Dale. Joyce Buick GMC, Chester Road, Avon. Welcome back to the Eagle's Nest, high atop here in our perch. Adam Mendoza, Donnie O'Toole, Christopher Mendoza on the call. Christopher on camera. Nice job on the JV game the last couple of days. Donnie, when you look at the first quarter and this being senior night, really just some, what can you say? Uh, Trey Jackson, who hasn't played a whole lot this year because of an injury, comes out and hits three threes. He's yeah, three for four from long range. Well, it's, it's kind of like what you and Coach Flan talked about in the pregame is, you know, his practices, you can't, no one's sitting down, no one's taking their, you know, no one's taking the day off. I mean, they, these guys are all practicing and held to the highest regard. They're all holding each other accountable. And that's what happened there. That's a result of that. Wendell Henry coming up with a rebound off to Cam Grant to Danny Lavelle to Brevin Coleman. Baseline move. Oh, nice touch using the glass. Tough move. Revan Coleman with two. He averages nine a game. Now the Eagles get a turnover. Lavelle looking to go down the floor, and he got mugged as Lazarus Barber. Well, you looked at him. His arm was underneath the arm, and that's not just a simple foul, Donnie. It's not. I, <laughs> listen, I'm, I, I'm in total agreement with you. Wendell Henry, low block, trying to battle his way in, kicking it out. It. Danny Lavelle. Nope. Oh, what a rebound by Brevin Coleman, oh, and he boy, comes he, up with two. Boy, he went up and got that. 27-12, our score. John Hay trying to battle it out. Oh, trying to get that inside to Lazarus Barber, and the ball got taken away. Perusik. We'll look over the defense, goes right of the lane, kicking it off to Cam Grant, wing three. Oh yes, Eagles are really on fire from three yeah. point range. Timeout is called, 6.48 to go here in the opening half. St. Ed's out to a 30 to 12 lead. And Donnie, um, you know, one of our big sponsors during the year is Joyce Buick GMC. And We've got a big QR code. Let's talk about that QR yeah, code. That QR code is what's going to do. It's going to direct you to our website uh, where you can uh, see the inventory we have. You can see some pricing. 
you can uh, see the staff. We have uh, Mike Joyce, uh, owner, uh, St. Edward alumni, Jim Judge, uh, Saint Ed uh, general manager. He is a, uh, a St. Edward alumni. Uh, you know, it's just it's a bunch of guys out in uh, John and Rainey. We have you know males, females. We got every we got everything you could want. So when you scan that QR code, it'll give you our inventory, and you can call me directly. Uh, call the store, ask for me, Donnie O'Toole. Uh, we'll get, we'll take care of you. Mention that you saw the um, QR code on the screen during the St. Ed's game for an extra discount. Well, as we get back, 6:48 to go in the opening half. St. Ed's leading it 30 to 12. And hey, this John Hay team's scrappy. Yeah, they are. You know, they're. I mean, they're well coached. Uh, you know, they they're competitive. They're attacking the glass. Little short on that pass as they work it out. Scarpetti into the game along with GLP from three, and he hit Just it. feeling it. Just feeling it. He has eight points. 33-12. Grady, when you, I, I always love talking to Grady. Um, it's exciting. You know, either down in the athletic office where his mom works, or just. You know, hey, how you doing and all that stuff. And as that shot doesn't go, Palmore comes up with the rebound and turnaround jumper. He picks up his first two, 33-14. Jump ball situation and the arrow facing St. Ed's. I talked to Nicole this tonight before, and you could see it in her face, you know, how sad she is about, you know, this being, you know, senior night for him. Because, uh, you know, Grady's just excelled at this school. And uh, he's done more. He's done a lot for the school, and the school's done a lot for him. And he's been around for a long time. Cause oh yeah. Grady Lenz Piper does or uh, make that. Uh, Danny Lavelle missing on the outside. He'll drive it in. GLP. Four nope. three. Nope. And uh, you know he's been around the program for a long time. Growing up as a kid. He gets it. Well spoken. Good kid. Hornets down 33-14. With a basketball is DeAnthony Moore. He'll look to work it on that baseline. Brevin Coleman cutting off the baseline. He'll come up with a steal. Up ahead to Lavelle. Lavelle on the right side. Leaves it to Scarpetti. Back to Lavelle. Underneath on a good dish nice to Brevin pass. Coleman. Nice pass. Coleman with six. All coming in the second quarter. 35-14 here. Eagles putting on full court pressure. Scarpetti. There on defense, floating it in, too hard off the iron. Palmore had the ball, but he got taken away from Scarpetti. Now there's a turnover. Palmore trying to fight for it, just can't get a good clean handle on the basketball. And the ball goes out of bounds, and it'll be John Hay basketball. Quincy Shields will check back in. Yeah, Flame may have left him on the bench too long. He may have stiffened up a little bit. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Quincy. I'm telling Coach, Coach, you can't sit me that long. Two minutes on, two minutes off. <laughs> right. <laughs> kind of like hockey. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> Good pick there by Palmer trying to work that give and go. They'll play it to the outside. Working it in the Barber. Up ahead. Shields left of the lane. Floating it up off the glass. No good. Henry rebound. Fighting for it. But the defense, and a good defense by DeAnthony Moore. Knocking the ball away from Wendell Henry. But he still last touched the ball. And it goes John Hay basketball. The Kulats brothers. K2. K squared coming out. They're going to make something happen. Thank goodness for different numbers. Nice drive. Shot doesn't go. Palmore coming up again. Can't get it. Oh, he just tried to smack that ball out of Quincy Shields' hands. Up over to Angelo Kulats, and the ball was stolen on a lazy pass by Lavelle. And Lavelle then gets called with the foul. Bounce pass. One on ones. Right? Yes, sir, Re indeed. Kind of like with the baseball. The ground ball, you look it in the mitt, and you trap the ball, right? In baseball, you throw the ball, right. you catch the ball, you hit the ball. 
and if the team's not doing it, you lollygag. When lollygaggers. You're lollygaggers. <laughs> One of my favorite movies, Bull Durham. Almost, almost that time of year for my one-day baseball movie marathon. Nice floater up. Oh, ah. that went in and out for Quincy Shields. I have my set baseball movies to start the baseball season. Yep. Bull Durham. Bull Durham. Mr. Baseball with Tom Selleck. Yep. Eight Men Out. Okay. Major League. There you go. And if I'm in that feel-good mood, for love of the game with Kevin Costner as that shot goes up and missed. And then one of my later favorites, Trouble with the Curve. I haven't seen that one. Oh. Um, Trouble with the Curve uh, is with one of the NSYNC guys as coming up and not coming up quickly is Joey Scarpetti. Boy, Scarps took, not to interrupt you, Scarps took a hit. Like he jumped like for a layup and the guy, it, it, unintentionally, but he like hip checked him and almost like his hip flew out. Joey Scarpetti. Coming into this game, 11 of 12 from the free throw line this year. I think I jinxed him on Tuesday night. Why did he whiff? Yeah, he was 11 of 11, and he missed. And I didn't say anything on the air. I just pointed to Christopher and the, that he was 100%. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Scarpetti picking up his first point, 36-14. Justin Timberlake, I was trying to figure out the guy. Justin Timberlake is in that movie, okay. along with uh, Mr. Dirty Harry. With, um, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood, great baseball movie. Missing on the second free throw. Is the, San, is the Sandlot up there for you? Uh, it's okay. We kind of hit a little cold streak here. Yeah, as Sullivan coming in, Max McClellan. Kulots. Oh, he got a friendly roll out of that one. Angelo coming up with his first three-pointer of the game. Hey, on senior night, you get that roll. Driving. McClellan trying to make the block. Fighting for the basketball against Palmore. Palmore, he's just a beast inside that bank. He moves well for his size. Scarpetti thought about it. Kulots. Nope. Ball loose. Picked up by Sullivan. Short. Oh, come on, guys. You <laughs> really short on the return shots. And that'll bring out Tay Shaw out onto the floor for Luke, for uh, Joey Scarpetti. 39-14, our score, 2.22 to go in the first half. They're trying to pad their offensive rebound stats. Isn't that what you did? No, sir. Are you I had, sure? I, I had a hard enough time getting the ball over the rim. <laughs> <laughs> and it still went in. <laughs> Tay Shaw getting the basket so, and the foul. So what happens there? I mean, it's a two. It's just a two-point basket. It's not a slam dunk. It's just a oops. You know, that's a lucky bounce. Yeah, yeah, it is. At the free throw line will be. Tay Shaw, 50% free throw shooter. The Eagles on the year shooting 65% from the charity stripe. The lefty sights, shoots, and hits. Tay Shaw with three points in the game. He picks up the three-point play, 44-14, here in the second quarter of play. Eagles with one more week of basketball in the regular season. And that's crazy. Yeah, it, it just seems like we started the season yesterday yeah. or last week. Yeah. Um, but when you look at it, as they round out the season, they got a score to settle with Brexville at Brexville score. and a score to settle with Richmond Heights here, yeah. who could be coming into that game still undefeated. Yeah, right. Long three ball off the back of the iron. Coming up with the rebound is McClellan up ahead to Sullivan. Sullivan missed the dunk. 
Now John Hay coming back. There's an outside jumper. That one does not go. Missed by Tavon Walker. If it wasn't senior night, you'd be given the speech. Yes. Speech being? Give me two the easy way. Flash and dash, that's okay on NBA 2K. Or whatever it is at. I'm more of an Atari Pong kind of guy. Right. That's why we're the best. <laughs> nice pass inside to McClellan. He was trying to kick it quickly over to Tay Shaw, but the ball was taken away. You know, when you look at John Hay, when once that ball gets inside the inside the paint, they're very pesky on the defensive side. Oh yeah, absolutely. They they crash well, they hit bodies well. There's a foul. And that one barely goes in for Max McClellan, his second point of the game. We missed a lot of bunnies. Yes, and there's another block this time by Tay Shaw. 39 seconds. 46-14 our score. Coming up at the half, we'll take a look at the sectional district bracket. Basket was hit by Charles Hall, his first two. 46-14, 30 seconds to go. Sean with the basketball, will dribble through traffic. They'll work for the last shot. Shaw being guarded by Charles Hall. Clock down to 13 seconds. They'll try to do a, a clear out, high screen. Underneath, nope. Rebound is picked up by Lazarus Barber, and that's the end of the second quarter of play. 46-16 is our score. We'll take this time out on the Eagles Sports Network. Being in Santa has taught me how to become a leader and how to talk when I feel like I need to talk and say the things that I need to say. Like we call for leadership. Like I know I have these talents, but I'm just gonna like kind of sit back and just let everything happen. Like now nah, I'm gonna step up and make it happen. And I think Ed's does one of the best jobs around of allowing a person to make their own path here. If you want to be an individual that has an impact in this community, you have all the resources to do so. Wow, like this place, like this place wants me to be something great.
And welcome back to St. Edward High School as you got an opportunity to see the Eagle cheerleaders do their routine here at the half. And we're gonna put up the bracket for the tournament. So the Eagles, the number one team in the Lakewood District will take on the winner of Medina Highland and Valley Forge on the 25th of February. And so there is how the bracket goes. On the lower side, it'll be Midview and Westlake and Elyria and Worcester in the lower half. So now, now we're gonna go to our three-quarter distance shot, Carter Potts. Why do I know him? He's also on the football team and he is also a member of the baseball team. What technique, make sure you got that wide, Christopher, so we can see where that back foot is. It's a $10,000 Shot challenge. Oh. Oh. Oh, so close. But yet, so far. Good effort. Very good effort. Quarter shot for $10,000. Well, as we looked at the bracket, um, we'll play the winner of uh, Valley Forge in Highland. And so the way the districts are set up, you go to Lakewood for the districts. And then if you happen to get through the districts, everybody is going to Kent State for the regionals. And it'll be a tough district region. Oh, there's no question. As, you know, you've got the likes of Garfield Heights, Rexville, St. Ignatius, Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary, and St. Ed's. Those are some of the top teams in the state in, in, in the districts right but also the state I mean it's uh, that's what I love about postseason because it, I mean at this time of season teams are coming together starting to play together they figured it out they know their identity um, they know exactly exactly what they need to do to be successful they play to their strengths you know it's not trying to figure out who they are you know that they, they know they know and the next two games are gonna be big tests for the Eagles at Brexville on Valentine's Day, and then on Friday night against Richmond Heights here at the Eagles Nest. Let's take a look at the scoring in this game. Tavon Walker for John Hay with four points, Dante Daggett with eight, Charles Hall with two, and Kaishan Palmer with two. For the Eagles, Joey Scarpetti with a point, Angela Kulats with three, McClellan with two, Hargett with two, Trey Jackson with nine, all in the first quarter. Tayshaw with three, Cam Grant with eight, Ryan Sullivan with two, Grady Lenz Pfeiffer with eight, Brevin Coleman with six, and Lucas Perusik with two points and two ferocious rejections. I mean, just disgusting 40 old moldy sock in a locker room blocks. I mean, that's how disgustingly bad those blocks were. It just <laughs> Unbelievable from our guard. I mean, would that accurately describe it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, as we get set for the second half, we talked about, uh, let me get, let's get one more break in. Why don't we do that? Uh, we'll get this break in right now on the Eagles Sports Network. For every just one more mile, to your next ace on the court. When you have a sports-related injury, Cleveland Clinic is here for them all. For our Cavaliers, our Guardians, and athletes at all levels. Our team helps keep you in the game. As the best orthopedic care in Ohio, we offer expert diagnosis, personalized sports therapies, and game-changing surgeries. For every injury, for every athlete, for every care in the world. Schedule your care today.
And welcome back to St. Edward High School on a Thursday evening. Boy, balmy 60 degree plus temperatures today in Northeast Ohio. And what's gonna happen tomorrow? <laughs> Snow. Only in, only in Northeast Ohio. Go figure, huh? Adam Mendoza along with Donnie O'Toole. So glad to have you along here on the Eagles Sports Network on this senior night. A special night for these young men that have put their, their heart into this program. Coming in as freshmen all the way through their senior year. And uh, really just a special game for these seniors. Um, it's, it's special for them, right. It's, it, it's, the school makes it special for them, but it's special for them because they, it, you're com you know, everything comes to fruition. And, you know, all those, all those late practices, all those road games, riding the bus, all those time off from uh, Christmas vacations, all those summer league games, all of it comes together to honor their, you know, themselves and honor the school they're playing for. And it, it, is, it is a privilege to play this game. It's a privilege to be a student at this school. And it's the school, the school's lucky to have these young men who they've helped mold into young men. Absolutely. Couldn't have, uh, couldn't have said it better, Donnie. 46-16, scoring at the end of the first quarter was 23-12 St. Ed's. 46-16 in the half. Eagles outscoring John Hay, 23-4. Very similar to the, um, the Solon game, but in the third quarter. And it was a tight game at the half in the third quarter. It was 26 to 20. Got you. And I'm sure Coach Flannery had a, a couple of words of encouragement. I, um, I hear that they are still echoing through the halls of Solon High School. That's what I heard. I don't want to start problems. because. <laughs> but I heard that it's still carrying on somewhere in the halls of uh, Solon High School. They're reverberating off the walls all uh -huh. over the place. Bouncing. They're stuck there like like, like glue. glue. All right, to start the second half, it'll be the original starting five. Hargett, Perusik, Grady Lenz, Pfeiffer, Trey Jackson, and Quincy Shields. Coach Smith checking in. He usually gives us tips for the second half, what we're going to try and accomplish. Pretty sophisticated. He says just try and get all the seniors a bucket. And nobody get hurt. Well, I wasn't going to say that because he did say that, but I don't want to jinx it. Let me do it, and I'll get the blame. <laughs> yeah. I'm good for that once in a while. <laughs> I get the announcer's jinx on basketball, on uh, free throws, you know. Yeah, so. right. Oh, that's an up travel. and down in the travel. <laughs> Dante Daggett just kind of looked at the referee. No, you're not going to call it, are you? <laughs> right. I mean, clearly hopped. And he knew it. And he knew it. Yeah, it was a little exaggerated Euro step. And he knew it. He was just kind of hoping, eh, please, don't call it. Lucas Perusa getting a high pick and screen. Down on the baseline, move against the big man, Palmore. Now inside. Shields got it rejected. Good block there by Daggett. Down the floor. They'll kick it out. Back into the forecourt to Walker. Here's a steal by Trey Jackson. Oh, boy. <laughs> Looking at... Coach Blanton there on the sideline. He probably he probably got in his stuff a little bit about that. Just kind of lost the handle of the basketball. That's okay. He heard footsteps. And we'll have a foul away from the ball. Foul is on Demetrius West, his first foul. Haven't had very many foul calls in this game. No, it's been a lot of up and down. Oh, I jinxed us. I jinxed us now. Yeah, we're here till 11 now. <laughs> You're on a roll, brother. <laughs> Tootsie roll? Tootsie roll, right. Nice pass inside the shield on the low block. No, don't call oh. it. Oh. <laughs> hey, that's a great flop. Hey, he sold the referee. Can't blame him, you know? Well, I'm guessing the referee, judging by his size, probably played guard and uh, <laughs> doesn't understand that unless there's blood coming out of your eyeballs. <laughs> if you're a big man, there's no foul. At least that's how I played. Had to play. John Coase and some of the other, Jim Bingham, some of those other guys were huge. 
Daggett with a basketball, driving the lane. Got the ball stripped, but a foul. First of all, he lost it out of his hands. And the foul is on Grady Lenz Pfeiffer. That's his first foul of the game. Don't look at me just because I said there was very little fouls called. We're going to be in the bonus here in about a minute. Well, it's kind of like on Tuesday night at the end of the freshman game as at the line is Daggett. His free throw is up and good. I'm looking at Coach Flannery. He got three and a half seconds. Solon has the ball down by three. He goes, Solon's going to hit a three. And sure enough, he did. Yep. He and, and he was so correct. I'm like, who are you picking for the uh, big game this weekend? Yeah, right. All right, after the free throw miss, John Hay with a basketball. Daggett driving. Nice pass to the big man, Palmore, his fourth. He's got soft hands for a big guy, man. He can finish around the hoop. 46-19. I bet you he plays football, too. you got to be that size and not play football. Absolutely. Hargett. There it is. Trey, three. Trey Jackson with 12 points, all coming from beyond the arc. Eagles up by 30. We'll have a running clock, and there's Trey Jackson. Let's see if he'll handle the basketball better this time. And he got it blocked, but he got fouled on the way to the basket. And the foul is on Demetrius West. I've been looking in the stands. I heard there was going to be uh, Judy Flannery sighting tonight, Eric's mom, and I haven't seen her yet. So if she's listening, miss you, Mrs. Flann. Wish you were here. Wish you would have got a ch we would have got a chance to catch up with you. Jackson, too hard off the back of the iron. He has 12 points on the night at 9 in the first quarter, all coming from downtown. Missing the second one. Battle for it, Shields rejected. Good block there by Hall. Now it's taken back and last touched. Tip. Should be St. Ed's basketball as it was touched by Donta Daggett. Yep, it was tipped. Oh, Mrs. Flans here. 508 left in the third quarter. Good to see her. <laughs> there is Hargett coming in with the basket, his fourth of the night. <laughs> 51-19. She was here all game. Either that or Eric forgot to send the limo again. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's all on you, buddy. I'm not even no. touching that one. <laughs> all right. Nice little weave out there. Here's Daggett. Oh, couldn't get it to fall. Rebound, rebound by Hargett. He went up and snatched that. Good rebound. Daggett averages 12 points a game. He's got nine tonight. Inside, Shields trying to go against Tavon Walker, and he gets called with a foul. Tavon Walker, the sophomore, at five foot nine, nine points a game. I thought it should be a running clock. Do you have access to Mr. Glassnap with your uh, hoodoo? Unless they're not going to do it. Yeah, hey, maybe they're not doing it. Yeah, maybe because the senior night. Maybe they're not doing it. Basket by Shields is good. Shields with his first point of the game. Danny Lavelle getting ready to check in for St. Edward. Big weekend of sports. As Shields for his second free throw. Nope, too hard off the iron. Rebound by Hargett. Turnaround jumper, good. We got the state wrestling duels on Saturday morning. Where's that at, here? That's here at St. Ed's. We'll have hockey at 4 o'clock on Saturday. Is that here? That is here. <laughs> or at, uh, not here, but. Uh, First Energy, right? No, Winterhurst. Or Winterhurst. So we'll, st and then we, let's go back a day. Oh! Oh! Missed dunk by Perusic. Underneath the shields. So tomorrow. Yeah. Let's, let's start in order. Friday, we'll have senior night for hockey 
at 6 o'clock at Winterhurst or yep. Serpentini Arena. Then on Saturday morning, we'll have the state duel starting at 11 here at St. Ed's. Then we will have hockey at 4. Who does wrestling with you? Is that still Murph? Uh, Murphy does it, but Cody Wagner does a lot of the calls for wrestling. He loves wrestling. I like it on the professional side. Grady Lenz Pfeiffer kicking it out. Trey Jackson. He's been deadly from the baseline. Just feeling it. 15 points for Trey Jackson. The foul is on Lucas Perusic as Lavelle comes in. So we've got hockey on Friday. Wrestling and hockey on hockey Saturday. Saturday. Then Tuesday basketball. Friday basketball. Next Saturday, we will be busy. Next Saturday, we would have the wrestling sectionals. Right. Then we would have basketball sectionals. And then a first round game, if it gets to that, or a second round game of hockey that day. Saw Coach Sullivan in the office the other day doing such a great job with that hockey team. They travel a lot. Oh, they were going up to Michigan for the weekend. Hargett coming up with a rebound off to Grady Lenz Pfeiffer. Hargett three. That one was money. Just dead on. Hargett with nine. So it'll, busy, it'll be a busy February and March. And then also for myself, throw in a little baseball. Yeah, throw baseball. Oh, folks, here, free plug. Baseball team is having a fundraiser on yeah, Saturday yeah. night. So at six from 6 to 9 at P.J. McIntyre's, if you go to stedwardeagles.com and go under the baseball team and go to the fundraiser, you can purchase a ticket and a, a lot of good food and fun and go after some uh, raffles, all to benefit the uh, St. Edward baseball program. They do a lot of traveling, don't they? You guys do a They're, lot of traveling. The varsity will be going to Tampa, Florida as Shields getting it underneath and the ball last touched. So they'll be traveling to Tampa for their spring break. I believe each team will have about 22 games on the schedule. Very good uh, schedule for freshmen, JV, and varsity. The varsity will start the season in Youngstown at the Bob Cini tournament. That one's short. Good rebound there by Potter. And they'll play it out again. 51 seconds remaining in the quarter. Hard shot doesn't go. Good rebound there by Potter. Fighting his way. And he'll go to the line. Good hustle by that young man. Yeah, he stuck with it. Coming into the game. Oh, in and out. Is that the, the Grant brothers? Who's 35? <laughs> <laughs> Is that him? I just want to get who's number 22. Casey Boyd has checked in for John Hay. Cameron Grant, Brevin Coleman have returned to action for St. Edward. Don't have number 22 on my roster. Oh, that's Bowden Grant. Oh, yeah. He just JV. That's who it is. That's Bowden Grant. So the third quarter comes to an end, but we'll have a free throw by Potter, and Mr. Potter gets it. 62 to 20. What was the what was the score for that third quarter? We gave up four points. We scored 16 in the third quarter. Both, both 
so it'll be Bowden Grant. And and how great is that? Younger brother, younger brother playing with older brother. Yeah, Flan likes to do that. He's done that for other brothers before. 62-20 yard score here at the end of three. Hey, what, but what, you know what? What other surprises he's got? What I like. Yeah. About this John Hay team, even though they're down by 42. They're not playing like they're down. 42. No, they're they're going after basketballs. Yeah. They're well, well coached team. Yeah, they're going after the ball in the key. They're they're going after on the defensive side. They'll go after that offensive rebound. There's no quit in this Hornet squad. No, they're getting after it, and it's a proud group of young men who uh, want to get better. And the way you get better is playing the best. Willie Henderson or Henderson will check in as the ball goes to Brevin Coleman here in quarter number four. Eagles up 62 to 20. Bowden Grant driving the lane and. Goes out of bounds and he'll stay with the Eagles. Our next broadcast for basketball will be on Tuesday night at Brexville at the Beehive. It's been a while since we've been there. Underneath to Lavelle, Bowden, Grant, three! <laughs> Bowden, Grant comes up for a three-pointer and Lazarus Barber comes up and uh, injured. He Got an injured shoulder on that. They're looking for a trainer. There he is. I didn't see what happened there. He may have got like hit going up for a rebound or yeah. And there on the floor, you see as they tend to Barber is Brendan O'Malley, who that. has water ready to go for him. What an example. Number one in my book. Absolutely. And a lot of people's book. And he's sporting old style warm-ups. Oh, yeah. He loves it. He loves it. Obviously, reflection of the way he was raised by his two great parents. His uncle, maybe not so much. <laughs> hey, hi. <laughs> Sometimes it's too easy. <laughs> I think he's sporting a 1998 or... I don't know. It's or an, an early... It's an old coach flan effort. It's an old, it's an old coach flan one? Want to take a break? Yeah, why don't we take a break? Pay the bills? Let's pay the bills on the Eagles Sports Network. At Joyce Buick GMC, we're receiving truckloads of new vehicles. Check out our great selection of new and certified used cars and trucks. For over 50 years, people have come from near and far for the best sales and service experience. See us today for the lowest prices and great selection in stock. And that's why people say, Drive Joyce. Your friends and neighbors, Dale. Joyce Buick GMC, Chester Road, Avon. Lazarus Barber coming off the floor getting helped by the St. Edge trainer. Someone texted me and wanted to know really how many fouls have been called since Adam opened his trap. <laughs> Uh, maybe five. I'm not going to tell you well, who no, it is. Well, no, seven. Seven fouls in the second half. There's four on us, three on them. Seven. Okay, so six since I've opened up my, my boy. You know. He's your son. <laughs> he, he, uh, no, I'm not going to threaten because I'll probably get in trouble. Yeah, he's giving me the I love you sign. All right, back to action as the Hornets with a basketball. Long outside jumper. Oh, that just spun dead on the back of the iron. Number 35, he's not on our roster, but he comes up with a big three-pointer. Lavelle missing. Palmore with the rebound. Up the middle on a three-on-one. Stopping, popping, hitting is DeAnthony Moore for his first two. 
again. It'll be DeAnthony Moore driving the right side. He'll stop. Going up against the big men. Lavelle coming up with her. And there you see. You see the scrappiness and then causing a turnover. Well, Danny brought the ball down instead of keeping it up. So that's the problem right there. Those guards are scrappy. Six and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Eagles up 65-25. On the drive, trying to get it to Palmore. Missing, Grant with the rebound. Off to Lavelle. Back over to Grady Lenz Pfeiffer. He'll lay it off to Danny Lavelle. Big red for three. Danny Dan. His first three of the ball game. 68-25. And the foul is on Coleman. That is foul number eight in the game, seven since I opened up my mouth for those people on uh, social media asking. <laughs> I don't know who it was. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody you had to know because they sent it to you. I don't get messages on my uh, little computer device called the phone. I still use the StarTech phone that's five yeah, pounds. right. right. Lavelle checking out of the ball game and Tayshaw checking back in as the ball goes out of bounds. Still running clock. 5-10 to go here in the fourth quarter play. Kulots, Gord, uh, Cam Grant, Bowden Grant, Grady Lenz Pfeiffer, and Tayshaw out on the floor for the Eagles. Grant off to Grant, back to GLP. Kicking it outside, Bowden Grant. Some of the players on the bench wanting him to go for a three, but Grady goes for a college three. Too hard off the back of the iron. Kulots comes up with the rebound, getting it to Grady. Off to Tony Kulots in the lane, putting it up short of the rim. And that was partially misdirected because of Palmore, the big man, number 44. There's a shot by Cam Grant off to Grady Lenz Pfeiffer. We're down to 4.20 to go. Cam Grant getting it off to Kulots. Timeout is going to be called just for a substitution as it'll be Angelo Kulots coming in. Favorite Grady moment, the sophomore year, home against Ignatius. They run the, I tell you, look for, look for Grady here, and they run the back screen for him, and he did the curl layup to win it. Awesome. So a 30-second timeout will be called. It's called by Coach Flannery, but the coach from John Hay wanted to talk to his troops. Sure. As we are down to 4.05 to go here in the fourth quarter. Not a bad crowd for a Thursday night either. No. And tomorrow night at Serpentini Arena, We'll have senior night for the hockey team, and we'll have that on the Eagle Sports Network beginning at about 545, give or take. We'll have the festivities for that. Carmen Angelo and I will have the game. We'll have a weekend of hockey, wrestling. Grant kicking it out. They'll work it around the corner. 349 to go. There's a ball. There's a steal. Moore in the paint, he'll back it out. Willie Henderson getting it off to Palmore, and Palmore's like that old school big guy. You just come up and you just kind of do like a baby hook. And Tony Kulots comes up with his first two of the night. Oh, get up, big man. Oh, too hard. As the Kulots brothers picking up Dantes Potter. And coming into the ball game, number 30. Oh, what a moment. Adam, just explain what's going on here. Brendan O'Malley is going to be coming into the game. Foul 
He's the team manager. In the lineup for John Hay, Tyron Walker, and Dante Padgett. Checking in for St. Edward, number 30, Brendan O'Malley. Brendan O'Malley, the team manager, is, and Coach Flannery does not do this at all. At all. And Brendan O'Malley, who has been a staple at get, St. Ed's. Get him the ball. Good Lord, get him the ball. Get in there. Oh, oh. he'll get an assist. He'll get the assist to Kulots. Brendan O'Malley is the team manager, and he's getting minutes in there for the basketball team. And I talked to Coach Flannery about that before the game as the basket is hit by Hall. He said the players were all in agreement to get him in on the ball game. Absolutely. What is, this, this group is just a special group. O'Malley getting it up top. He'll work it off. Hey, nice little set of a screen. I'll give it to him. He looks, he's going, he's like, come on, I'll set you the screen. Come on, get yeah. in there. Oh. <laughs> Look at that bench. <laughs> And at the free oh, throw so line will be Brendan O'Malley. Oh, I wish you could see his parents right now. Brendan O'Malley at the line for two. Oh, hit him. Oh, oh. come on, buddy. We're just going to let the pictures give us the story. We got the rebound. Off to O'Malley. He'll pick it up. Shaw getting it in. No. Oh. Get it to him. Shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at him. Look at him. Oh, what a moment. What a special moment. Oh, I got goosebumps. What a special moment for that young man, the thrill of a lifetime. They're going to get him with the water here, Adam. There's no doubt about that. And he does it as time expires. Seventy-four twenty-eight, our final. And two good field stories in this game. Trey Jackson, in his first game really all season, in his first start, hits for 15 points with a number from three-point range. And then Brendan O'Malley, the team manager, getting in and getting a basket and an assist. Just what a special, special moment. Leading scorer for the Eagles, Trey Jackson with 15. And what a night for that young man. Brendan O'Malley, the team manager, getting two points before the clock hit zero. I mean, that is just so special. You know, how, how many hours did he spend picking up towels, picking up uniforms, going to help the other team, like you said, just completely selfless. I mean, he just... He is for the betterment of other people. He puts others in front of him. And to have that happen for that special moment for him is awesome. So the Eagles come up with the big win against John Hay. They'll be back in action on Tuesday night against the Brexville Bees at Brexville as... Their record goes to 17 and 1 on senior night. 74-28 our score. I missed it earlier. Dr. Dan's wife Caroline Flannery. It's her birthday today, so happy birthday. Oh, also Danny Gallagher. His birthday. Tomorrow. Danny Gallagher, Danny I, Gallagher, and mine tomorrow. Yes, I was about to get to you because yeah. I was gonna sing happy birthday. Ah. <laughs> Don't have to do that. <laughs> All right, I won't. You, you get to my age, you don't celebrate them. <laughs> You're just happy you have another one. Exactly. 
You know what? We're going to wrap things up here. Yep. Eagles with a big win tonight over the John Hay Hornets. They'll be back in action on Tuesday night against Brexville. For my partner, Donnie O'Toole, Christopher Mendoza on camera, the Eagles win it by a score of 74 to 28. This is the Eagles Sports Network.